Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I want to take a look at the Portuguese unique building, the Feitoria. Now, I've done two videos on it in the past, but again, they've gone and changed the resource generation rates, actually making it quite a bit better. So it was time for another update. Let's check it out. To start with the basics about the Feitoria, it's a unique building for the Portuguese in Imperial Age, which you can think of as a factory that generates a trickle of resources similar to relics, but instead of gold it generates all of them. The downside is its initial high cost and that it takes up 20 population space. The big question though is how much does it generate compared to 20 population worth of villagers or trade cards? Traditionally, it's always been worse than 20 villagers, but with the new buff, is it possible it's close enough that the lower resources might be worth some of the advantages it offers? To start looking into this, let's first see how much it generates. Each minute, a Faderia now gives you 60 wood, 96 food, 42 gold, and 18 stone. That's more than a 50% jump in total resources compared to what it's been for the last few years. The first obvious question, I think, is how long does it take to pay for itself? Well, you're looking at about 6 minutes to recover your initial gold investment, and almost 14 minutes to get your stone back. If you're building them with the intention of making infinite castles and towers, you're really playing for the long con. And even after they pay for themselves, you're looking at the stone for another tower roughly every 7 minutes of game time. But of course, you might see that as just an added bonus on top of all of the other resources they're bringing in. So let's see how that compares to just using the population space on villagers. Here are the collection rates I found for the last Faderia video and represent what perfectly efficient villagers would get. You probably won't get numbers quite this good in reality because of bumping and the distance to mills and camps, but if we use these then the Faderia is the equivalent of about 8 villagers. Maybe 9 or 10 in practice given the cost of camps and farms and other little inefficiencies, but the point is villagers gather significantly more, and even conservatively it's something like twice as much. So that's it then, just always make villagers, right? Well, that would probably be the best advice on maps that have infinite stone and gold, but in reality those things run out. It doesn't matter if a villager can mine 27 stone per minute if there's no stone on the map. Well, the fate area isn't constrained by tiny details like the law of conservation of mass. That said, there is a way for villagers to keep generating gold and stone when there's none left, and that's by selling and trading at the market. Let's suppose you're in a 1 vs 1 game with no option to trade, and want to make a lot of towers or castles as Portuguese. You go for Portuguese to directly generate stone, and your opponent uses villagers and the market. Who wins? Well, obviously the price of stone matters here. The Feitoria is generating 18 stone per minute, and we'll assume you're selling the wood and food at bottomed out market prices with guilds as well, which is 17 gold per 100 resources. Add in your 42 gold per minute to that, and you have 68 or 69 more gold that you can use to buy extra stone from the market. Another player using the same 20 population space on 10 lumberjacks and 10 farmers, depending on their efficiency and upgrades, is looking at a theoretical maximum of a little under 100 gold per minute. Though again, in practice it's probably a little lower. Likewise, you could go full deforestation mode and use all 20 as lumberjacks, which would get you more like up to 117 gold per minute from selling at the market. The reason it ends up being slightly better is that while farms convert efficiently from wood to food, it's at a slower rate, and you do actually get more by going all on wood. When stone prices are low, that means using villagers to buy is more effective, but after prices reach over 170 gold to buy 100 stone, the Faderia starts to outperform the 10 lumberjack and 10 farmer combination. The 20 lumberjack method though does better until stone prices reach 269, which could theoretically happen, especially in this case where we have a bidding war. It seems to me like the Faderia is fairly balanced with villagers in terms of stone collection now, and of course always maintains that level of efficiency, without needing to refresh camps and pay for farms, while automating your economy to a large degree. Over the very long term in a multi-hour game, there is certainly the potential for value. That said, if stone prices are low, there's a clear advantage to using villagers to buy it, and the numbers don't show a compelling reason to ever choose a Faderia over mining on the map, if your goal is to maximize stone income at least. That's also to say nothing of the fact that you're losing 250 stone just making the building to begin with. But now instead of stone, let's say your focus is on gold. In a 1 vs 1 or free for all, there's inevitably a point that natural gold on the map has run out, and you have to rely on a combination of relics and selling at the market to make your precious few gold units. 
The Faderia now makes much more gold than it used to, so how does it stack up in that situation? Well, again, converting the food and wood cost to gold and adding that on, we have each Faderia generating around 68 or 69 gold per minute after using the market. We now have the issue of the stone cost again though, and how we want to value the 18 stone per minute. We'll come back to that in a second. Going back to our 10 lumberjacks and farmers making a theoretical maximum of 99 gold per minute, and our 20 lumberjacks making up to 117 gold per minute, the Faderia doesn't jump out as a quick way to make gold. In fact, I found before that trade cards can almost always make more than 15 gold per minute each, often quite a bit more, which completely dwarfs the other methods of gold generation that we're talking about. It is possible though that if you can sell that 18 stone per minute for more than 169 at the market, then the Faderia will start to outpace the combination of lumberjacks and farmers, and a stone selling price of over 269 gold per 100 stone can beat 20 lumberjacks. The thing to remember is that as you sell the stone you're generating, the prices are being pushed down. So unless someone is working hard to push the price back up, you're looking at a diminishing gold income over time. Again, in reasonable situations, according to the numbers, the Faderia is never the fastest way to get gold, which to be fair is a good thing, since it carries a lot of other advantages over a traditional economy. But speaking of which, now let's look at some of the advantages that might make the Faderia actually worth the trade-off. The first advantage is quite simply the fact that the resources are unlimited. In isolation, it's one thing to look at the gold income with 20 lumberjacks and extrapolate that forward, but at some point the map can run out of trees. Even one lumberjack can eventually chop a forest nothing map. At the least, running out of safe wood lines can definitely happen, and even if it's less efficient, when compared to the alternative of no wood income, the Faderia suddenly looks a lot better. Another big benefit is just the convenience. Not only does it take up less space than an equivalent setup of farmers and lumberjacks, but also think about how much of your attention it frees up. There's no need to refresh camps or worry about idle villagers. Simply make five or six faderias and you can put all of your attention into just managing your military. Maybe you feel your attention and micro adds enough value that it justifies having fewer total resources to work with. And on the topic of attention and economy, the Faderia is also intrinsically much harder to raid. A couple of raiding units that manage to sneak into your town could mean losing or at least idling a lot of villagers. On the flip side, Faderias have more HP than castles, so small raids aren't as big of a concern. The last advantage, I think, is the potential it gives to boom or rebuild quickly. When we're talking about population efficiency, it carries with it an assumption we're at our population max and making decisions about trade-offs, but sometimes you're not at your limit, and population space is something you have a lot of. A good example of this is in a team game when your town is being destroyed and you're trying to relocate. Of course, you can put down town centers, but there's a cap on how quickly you can make villagers. In that case, it's just an extra building you can make that helps you jump in and get your economy going again. And before we wrap up, I want to end with a couple of miscellaneous factoids to keep in mind. The first is that Faderias don't count toward the cost of spies. So if you go completely military and Faderia focused, you'll have to hope your opponent doesn't notice that. The second is that the Faderia can be converted by a monk with redemption and generates resources for the opponent while taking up 20 of their population space. If in doubt, you can always delete the Faderia before that happens. But that's my take on the Faderia's current state. I wouldn't say you should feel like you have to make them in every game as Portuguese, and it seems very intentional that there's a balance between giving up quite a bit of economy for some other advantages in the super late game. Hopefully this video helps you at least better understand the various factors that you're trying to weigh. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.